Hey, Cross Kids, we are so excited to be with you in your homes today. We've got a couple of fun things that we're going to do, so thank you for being a part of our kids' lesson. I have a question that I want to ask. How many of you guys have ever played with a marble before? Raise your hand. I see you. I see you too. Now, to be honest, how many parents feel like they're losing their marbles right now? Anybody? Just kidding, kind of. Okay, we're going to play a fun game called Marble Race. And so here's what's about to happen. You're going to see a list of marbles. And the first thing you're going to do is choose your marble. Maybe you want to be ice cream, bumble, blaze, or deep blue. So I want you to think right now and lift up your hand in your homes if you think that ice cream is going to win the marble race. And now lift up your other hand if you think that Bumble is going to win. Raise your hand if you think that Blaze is the winning marble. And last but not least, who likes Deep Blue to win? All right, now that you voted, make sure you say the name out loud, Ice Cream, Bumble, Blaze, or Deep Blue, and we are going to do the countdown. Three, two, one, here we go. We're going to see what marble makes it down the track and to the end first. I don't know. It looks like... Ice cream maybe is taking the lead, but we're going to see what happens as the marbles go one by one and take the track all the way down to see which one is going to come out winning. We don't know yet. Wait for it. Here they go around the corners. I think it might have been Blaze that's going to be in the lead. We're going to see which one comes out to be today's winner all the way down the ladders here they go side to side down the colorful track and we're almost there to the end which one is it going to be it looked like for just a second bumble i think is coming towards the front but we are going to find out all the way down the tubes, down the slide. First place goes to ice cream. So if you picked ice cream, I'm going to say that you deserve ice cream for breakfast. Maybe, maybe not. That is up to your parents. But we are excited that ice cream won the marble race. And thank you for being awesome and playing that game with us today. Now we want to do something pretty incredible, which is called worship. And this is so awesome because worship is just about us talking to God because he's right here with us. And today is a very special Sunday for worship. It's what we called Palm Sunday. You're going to find out more about that today in the lesson. But we're going to do an incredible song called One Way. So I want you guys to stand up and I want you to get ready as we worship together. You can start clapping. Here we go. Down at your feet, you're the only one I need. I turn to you and you are always there. Yeah. Trouble times, it's you I see. But you first, that's all I need. I'm all I am, all to you. One way, one way, one way. 
And today you guys are about to have an incredible lesson on how Jesus changes everything. In fact, that is our true clue for the day. So I want you guys to say it with me. Say, Jesus changes everything. Let's do that one more time. Jesus changes everything. Good job. You guys enjoy your lesson and I'll see you right after. Everything is canceled. Everything's called off because we're in quarantine. Everything is canceled. Just like a bad dream. Oh, you're here early. Hi. It's uh, 30 minutes till church starts. But of course you knew that because Cross Kids comes 30 minutes before service. So glad you're here. Today is a very special day. It has a special name. Does anyone know what today is called? For everyone who just said Sunday, yes, it's Sunday, but that's not what we're looking for. There's a special name. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Do you know now? It's Palm Sunday, that's right. Today is Palm Sunday. It's a week until Easter, the day we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead to forgive us of our sins, the most exciting day of the whole year, and it's going to be so much fun to celebrate Easter next week. And even though we're all in different houses around the county, we're still celebrating Jesus and worshiping him. So that's very exciting. Well, today we've got a great lesson and a great story, uh, but I wanted to see what we did the last few weeks. Uh, three weeks ago, we did Faith Smashes Fear. We talked about God's amazing power and how he takes care of us. Two weeks ago, we said God's love never fails. That's why we can trust in him, because of his great love for us. Last week, we said love God, love people, because we need to take his love and show it to the people around us, especially the people in our houses. This week, we have Jesus changes everything, because when you have Jesus things change. Well, the story is, well, it's got a donkey in it. That's why we've got a picture of a donkey. Hannah, my daughter, painted this donkey for us. This is Bucket, by the way, the donkey's name. And there's actually two donkeys in today's story, and we've got one in our painting. So a beautiful donkey. We were going to have a real donkey, but since no one's here, we canceled that. All right. Well, the week before Jesus was going to die, or the week he was going to be crucified, the week before he rose, he came to Jerusalem, and something very important and very special was about to happen as he approached Jerusalem. You see, this had been foretold in the Old Testament, in the prophets, in the book of Zechariah. They said, see, your king comes to you riding on a donkey. Why is it important that there's a donkey? Well, when the Roman soldiers came and conquered you, they rode a horse. But when Jesus came, he rode a donkey. Because he didn't come as a conqueror to destroy. He came as a savior. He came to bring peace. Jesus and his disciples were heading to Jerusalem and he told two of the disciples, hey, go into town. And as you're going in, you'll see two donkeys. They'll be tied up. Untie them and bring them. And the people are going to ask, hey, what are you doing with those donkeys? You just tell them the Lord needs them and they'll be cool. So the two disciples went on into town, and they saw it just as Jesus said. There were the donkeys. So they untied the donkeys, and as they were doing that, the people who were there said, Hey, what are you doing with those donkeys? Because the disciples did not own the donkeys. Uh, but Jesus owns everything, so it was okay. Jesus had told them to take them, and they said, The Lord needs them. And the people let the disciples take the donkeys. So they brought the donkeys to Jesus, and Jesus got on the younger donkey, the one that had never been ridden. And as he started getting close to Jerusalem, a large crowd gathered. See, they had been following him because just a little while before he had raised Lazarus from the dead, people were getting excited about the amazing things Jesus had done, and they were starting to think, could this be the Messiah? He's coming to Jerusalem. He's riding on a donkey, just like Zechariah said, and he's going to overthrow the Romans and make us victorious again. Well, okay, so they were missing the point. But the important thing was they were there with Jesus, and they began to worship him, and they began to lay down palm branches and coats in the road so that the donkey could pass over them. And they began to wave the branches in the air and say, Hosanna. Hosanna is a word in Hebrew that means save now. They were looking for someone to rescue them from the Romans. 
Jesus had come to rescue them from their sins. Jesus had come to save now, and he was about to do it. And they said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they worshiped him. And Jesus came into Jerusalem, receiving the praise he deserved. And while they didn't really understand what they were doing or why, the important thing was that they had recognized that Jesus changed things. When Jesus came, people who used to be blind started to see. And people who used to be deaf could hear. And Lazarus, who used to be dead, was alive. When Jesus came, little children who were not really important in that society, they could come up to this important man, and he loved them. Jesus changed everything. And he was about to change everything more than they could possibly imagine. Because later that week, he would die on the cross to pay the price for their sins. And a week later, he would rise again to defeat sin and death. This week's true clue, Jesus changes everything, is really, really important. And Jesus changes everything when we get into his presence and meet with him. All right, so this last week, my grandfather passed away. My grandfather was the godliest person I've ever known. And he was my spiritual hero. So I wanted to tell you a story that he told me that illustrates how Jesus changes everything. In 1935, just outside Scranton, Pennsylvania, lived a coal miner named Earl. Now, if you know anything about history, you know that 1935 was the middle of the Great Depression. And things were very, very hard. People didn't have jobs. People didn't have food. It was a difficult time. And Earl had one of the most difficult jobs. He was a coal miner, which is actually the most dangerous job in the world. And every day he'd go deep underground and his job always seems to me to be the scariest of them all. He had to crawl into a little tunnel just barely bigger than he was with the dynamite to take it to the end of the tunnel and then back out so that they could blow up the dynamite and get the coal out of the ground. Now, Earl was not a Christian. Earl had a family. His wife was Pearl, Earl and Pearl. And they had three children their oldest was a son named Richard, and he was eight in 1935. Um, Earl turned to some bad things, some bad choices, to help him deal with the problems that were around him. Just like today, things were scary and things were hard, and instead of having Jesus to lean on, he had nothing, and he turned to some bad things. And it was hurting his family. But there was a church in that town, too, and the church was full of people who just loved Jesus. And one of them was a man whose name I don't know, but he saw Earl, and he knew there was someone who needed to meet Jesus because Jesus changes everything. So he told Earl about Jesus, and he told him to come to church, and Earl said no, and he said no a number of times. I don't know how long this went on, but he kept rejecting him. But the man from the church didn't give up. He kept asking Earl to come because he knew he needed to meet Jesus. And one day, whether it was just because he was tired of being asked or because he really wanted to find out what church was about, Earl said okay. And so he got his wife and children ready one Sunday morning, and they went to church, and that day they got saved. They met Jesus, and everything was changed. Now, the Great Depression was still there, and Earl was still a poor coal miner, and things were still hard. But instead of having nothing and no one to lean on, he now had the power and the love and the peace of Jesus inside him, and he was changed. And everything for his family changed. Richard was my grandfather. And if it hadn't been for the man whose name I don't know leading Earl to Jesus, my grandfather wouldn't have been saved either, and he wouldn't have been the godliest man I've ever known. Jesus' power to change things is so incredible. We can't even imagine or dream of the things he can do with us and through us, of the things he can do in our life. No one in 1935 could have dreamed that this story would be told today to remember the power of Jesus and his ability to change things. 
And when I say Jesus changes things, I don't mean that he's going to magically make all the coronavirus go away. But what he does do is he changes us. When we get into his presence, when we start feeling his love, when he fills us up, then we can get away from the fear and the stress and the anxiety. We don't have to have all those negative emotions. We can give them to Jesus and he can change things. He can change things in our hearts and in our homes and in our communities, and he can use us to bring that change to other people. But we have to get into his presence. We have to meet him. And that's why I tell you every week that you've got to read your Bible and you've got to pray because you've got to get into God's presence. And there's a third really important thing that I don't always say every week, but it's still really important, and that's worship. See, when Jesus rode in on the donkey to Jerusalem, the people were worshiping him. And while they didn't understand the whole story, they did understand that Jesus changes things. And when we worship him, he changes us. So when you're feeling afraid or when you're feeling stressed or when it's just a frustrating day because you're stuck at home again and your activities are canceled, worship him. Remind yourself to come into his presence and worship him. This week, we have a challenge. We've had a challenge the last couple of weeks, and we have another one this week, something I'd like you to tape and put up on the interwebs and t- tag Cross Church so that other people can celebrate this with you. What I'd like you to do is worship, whether you sing a song that already exists or make a household band and sing a song or make up a brand new song that no one's ever heard or just march around the house beating on pots and pans with wooden spoons. Whatever it is you do, make a joyful noise to the Lord and worship him. Put it up on the internet so we can all join with you. It'll be great. So I look forward to seeing you next week on Easter. Have a great week. You guys are the best kids ever. We want to make sure that we remember our true clue this week, and that is Jesus changes everything. You guys are awesome. Let's do that one more time together. Jesus changes everything. You need to remember that this week because it is so powerful that Jesus changes everything for you and for me. And don't forget our Cross Kids Challenge of the Week, which is to make a joyful noise to the Lord. So maybe you're going to get those pots and pans, or you're going to have your own band, or you're just going to write your own song. But we want to make sure that you guys make a joyful noise unto the Lord because He is worth our worship. We love you guys, and we'll see you next Sunday.